And so please welcome on stage Giuseppe. He's going to talk about how Kotlin can change developer experience with modern graphics APIs. Please. Hi, thank you. I, as I said, um, I'm Giuseppe Barbieri. I um, am a graphic developer by Reno, who is working on, um, on a software called uh, MCheck, uh, which is a cat-like software uh, for analyzing the um, visibility field of different types of vehicles. And uh, basically, I fell in love with Kotlin some years ago, and then I started writing some um, utility lips to help uh, the development with, uh, with graphics. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start with OpenGL. I will assume that, um, yeah, we are uh, all uh, Kotlinians. And um, some of you might already know OpenGL and maybe Vulkan. Do you, how many, how many knows OpenGL? OK. Vulkan? OK. So um, for the others, uh, uh, let's say this is much more about code. So you can still uh, understand uh, most of the stuff. Um, so let's get started with OpenGL. So uh, it's a, a really whole library, let's say, started in 91 with uh, SGI. Then um, they um, left uh, the development in 2006 uh, and basically hand over to Kronos, uh, which um, released uh, um, a very big uh, version, 3.0, in 2008. They also introduced um, the application mechanism and context. And um, the 4.1 is the less available macOS. This is a little uh, shame. And the last release uh, available for all the other platform is 4.6, uh, which was released on 2017, two years ago. Vulkan came a little earlier than that. So uh, welcome, GLN. Um, what is about? Basically about uh, um, makes uh, some, I would say, some massive use of uh, inline classes, where basically you already know it's um, an integer. And most of the time, it's an integer, but works like uh, classes. And uh, also enums, although they are not really available in Kotlin, but there's a little trick. Then also, uh, we have inline functions. So basically, you write the nice code, and then everything, um, all the, let's say, I will not say ugly, but all the boilerplate code will be then replaced by, by the compiler. It's also object-oriented. So uh, as I say, the, on, the, on the inline classes, we have all the method. Um, DSL, where you can easily wrap some scope, some, let's say, um, OpenGL um, object, and then inside the scope, um, do something nice. Functional programming, so you can pass around lambdas whenever needed. and um, there are also some convenience overloading function that basically um, take maybe some parameter, some, let's say, um, parameters which are quite obvious out of the equation. So uh, we can have some more concise code. And it plays quite well with, uh, quite nicely with um, another library, uh, GLM. It's basically a part of it, the original C GLM. To get the, the best way is just to start showing code. And let's go through a very, very simple Hello World program. So in this case, for example, we, have a, we start our main. We define, we define some variable uh, where we have, for example, um, the, the program variable, then an enumerator to identify the two buffers that we are going to use, one for the vertex and one for the element, then the actual variable, which is under the hood, it's a um, direct int buffer. It's native memory. Then we have one integer for, uh, for the vertex array and two for the uniform, uh, the so-called MVP for the model view projection matrix, and one for the diffuse color. Then let's dig into our first method, any program. OK. Here you can see, in our function, we start uh, j just I will show you first the, the, the plain way to do it in Kotlin. So we first um, create our program. Then we want to um, create our vertex shader. We have another function for that called init vertex shader. We go inside our init vertex shader. We can 
um, define here the source. This is a pretty standard shader where we have, for example, a matrix uh, to then incoming um, attribute, vertex attributes. And um, here, Kotlin makes very nice because first we have uh, the, um, the simple quote. So uh, compared to Java, this is already a very nice point, very nice advantages. And if we want, we can also inject, as you see in the, um, in the comment, we can inject some uh, explicit uh, um, vertex uh, layout, uh, like, for example, position. Then we have also one for the color. We have an outside code for the color that will be linearly interpreted by the fragment shader. And then in the main, we simply multiply the, uh, multiply the incoming position by the matrix we assign to the, um, the, uh, to the um, GLSL uh, position. And then we also pass the color. Then we create our vertex shader. We, pass the, um, we need to pass, uh, of course, the, um, the type of vertex shader. That, the type of the shader that we want to create, in this case, vertex shader. Then uh, we can have a generic init shader where we give uh, the object we just created and the source. In the init shaders, we receive, as I say, the shaders and the source. So first, we want to set the source to the shaders. We want then to compile the shaders. It's a lot of redundancy here. Then we want to check if, of course, Everything went fine, or we, we want to know if there was some problem. So we retrieve the compile status. GL get shader i means that, of course, we will get an int. Then we need to, for example, uh, to uh, check this int against one um, OpenGL concept, like GL false. If the compile fail, then we need to, we want to see what went wrong. So, we want, of course, to retrieve the info log, but we have to retrieve the info log, we need first to retrieve the info log length. And this is what we are doing here. Just get shader i, we pass the shader set, and then the constant info log length. We return an int. Then with this, we can call gl get shader info, which will return automatically a string. And then finally, we can throw our nice exception with the reason why the compilation failed. Then we can come back and we can return our vertex, which is an int. So uh, how can we make this nicer? First, we will return from the index vertex shader a GL shader. This is an inline classes. The source is the same. Let's comment out for space problems. Then um, our original GL create shader will be converted to a um, static function on the inline class. So we want a, a GL shader, and we call uh, create, passing. In this case, um, vertex shader is, um, you can think about like an ending. Then what we do here is basically we scope the GL shader. And then we can simply type much shorter code, because we scoped it, so we know what is, this is going about, and we don't need and we don't want any more redundancy. So we call simply source, source. Maybe this is unfortunately naming. Then we compile our shaders. Uh, compile status, uh, this is uh, also nice. We are um, inside this, uh, let's say inside the scopes. So um, compile status uh, is just, uh, um, let's say, uh, get uh, um, custom get uh, variable, which will return, of course, uh, the compile status. And uh, we already know that the compile status should be a Boolean. So immediately, we can return directly a Boolean. And then also the info log. I don't want to write all the boiler code. So I want to hide in the library. I just want to type uh, GL shader info log, and then I retrieve all the, all the log that is telling me what went wrong. So we saw here um, GL shader dot create vertex shader. Question is, what is this vertex shader? It's an inline class or a numerator? Well, it's actually both. Because um, although Kotlin doesn't have yet inline numerator, there is um, an issue on um, U-Track, um, which I personally hope to um, implement also um, inline numerator. 
It's going to take some time. Hopefully, one day we will get them. But in the meantime, there was an, a user, I don't remember anymore the, the name, but on the, on, the, on the forum, on the Kotlin forum, wrote it, these nice tricks where we can basically use inline classes as a, an enumerator. There's just one disadvantage, let's say. Basically, the, the end user can um, create some additional enumerator, but of course, we want to play nice, so it's cooperative environment, and we don't, we, uh, I mean, the user will not hurt itself and create an additional, um, maybe wrong uh, enumerator. Um, then in our um, init, we come back to the init program. We just came back from create a vertex shader. Fragment is basically the same. I will not go inside because, because of a matter of time. Then we have to attach the vertex and the fragment to our program. We, in this case, for example, we bind the attribute location like position and color to some um, parameterized uh, uh, variable. And then we link our program. Um, let's, for a moment, uh, um, pause here and see what ca this can be, what this can become. So, uh, program can be also um, an inline classes where we call basically GL program create, and then we call um, apply. Here, GL program will be scoped again. We call our uh, corresponding create vertex and fragment shader, which in this case they will return inline classes instead of int. Then we can use, for example, the nice overlay, overlay, overload operator from Kotlin to attach the vertex to the, to the program. We can then, instead of all of this stuff, uh, GL binding to boot location, blah, blah, we can simply type uh, the string. We are inside the scope, so we offer uh, an extension function on the string that will, when we be set, it will be automatically called GL bin attribute location behind the curtains. So it's more like, I would say, natural. Then we link. Just one call, and then we, we continue. We continue. Here, instead of link status, we have, as before, just one variable because we are inside the, this block. Also, info log is just one line. Then we detach the shaders. It's not mandatory, but if you want to do the things clear, we detach them from the program, and then we simply delete the shaders. Uh, since uh, they are inline classes, we have uh, a method available on the inline class itself. Honestly, you can do all of this with just one line. Uh, using GL program init from path, you give the path of the shadow source, and then the library will look through uh, in this path for, um, you give up to the name of the shaders, then the shaders need to be, need to have all the same name, and then through some um, standard um, shader extension like vert, frag, geom, test, and so on, we look if they are available. If they are available, we load them, and then it will compile into the program. Also, it will look in the same directory if you have any import on any additional shaders. Remember when we had to bind uh, the um, attribute location? This, if you remember, need to be done before linking the program. So how can we do? We just pass them as a lambda at the end of our in init program. And this lambda will be, of course, served to you with the uh, program base. Uh, it's uh, a co uh, an object that basically um, offer you this, all these nice stuff, like um, attribute with each, an extension uh, variable on, the, on a string. And this will be called before the link program. Then link program, blah, blah, return the GL program to you. Everything nice and puffy. OK, now init buffer. We go in the init buffer. This is pretty standard. We generate the buffer. We bind the, we bind the buffer that we retrieve from our buffer variable using the enumerator, just to make it nicer. Uh, then we bind to the zero array buffer target. We upload the position. We uh, detach the, the buffer. Then uh, we do the same for the element. And then we check the error. And we come out. So here, the buffer, we can basically um, 
generate them in just one line, we scope them. We, since we scope, we can just use the numerator to retrieve the, co the corresponding buffer. We bound it, and then we pass the lambda, what we call, for example, just data position uh, data. Um, everything is already known. We know the buffer. We know the target. No need to redeclare them. Same for the element, and so on. At the end, the buffer will be detached. Check error. We need vertex array. We do the same. Generate the vertex array, bind. We need to bind the buffer. We need to call a GL vertex at the boot point, where we give uh, all the stuff uh, of uh, all the stuff to, um, specification for our vertex layout. Then we detach a bind, the bind buffer. And the vertex array required to left bond the element array. This is what we do. We enable, we detach, and we check the error. What we can do, we can call gel, gen vertex array, we give the reference to our inline function. This is also something really cool in Kotlin. We bound it, we, buffer, we scope the buffers, we call the numerator, bound on array. GLN offers some predefined uh, layout, just post two call preset, will automatically call all the line that you see above. We bind the element, we enable, we check the error and we come back. Then here in the render, we basically have a window size vector position, vector here position, where we calculate our projection, matrix, view, and MVP matrix. Then GLN offers you some uh, overloading function like this GL uh, viewport window size, set a clear color, clear depth, then we clear the corresponding buffer, and we go to the next stuff. We, buy, we use the program. We retrieve the memory stack in order to allocate our, our uh, matrix on the, in native memory on the thread stack. And uh, we bind the vertex array, draw element, unbind, and use the program, return true. This can be done in the following code. Program, use, we enter, just GL uniform, uniform MVP, and we give the matrix. And we will, everything will be done in the background. Vertex array bound, as before, draw element, just pass element. Triangle is the default type primitive, and all the rest will be retrieved from the, in this case, element is an int buffer, so we can retrieve the number of elements that remains, the type, sign int, so on, sign int, and then the pointer at the end is defaulted to zero. That's true and true. At the end, we can just call the corresponding delete on the stuff. So with DSA, we can, basically what was before, like uh, GL buffer parameter get uh, translated to GL get name buffer parameter. With GLN, you simply call buffer immutable storage on the inline class itself. Pretty natural and standard. So Vulkan, it's not only a cross-platform rendering, but also computing API. We're supposed to, supposed to also, um, let's say, take over OpenCL. Really low horror render. You have more than 1,000 lines for um, a single hello triangle. Boot upon mantle, mantle uh, donated by MD, was released in 2016, and the last release was at the beginning of this year. We have basic also inline classes, and inline functions. It's object oriented. All the VK um, object has a, a lot of function on there. Functional programming and um, convenience overloading, low function. So where basically we. Um, call the very end function of the LVGGL binding just before passing, uh, going to the native, and then also play nice with GLM. Let's go just through a very short stuff. So just like creating instance, we want to have a validation. What do we need to do first? Usually you want to retrieve the stack at the beginning of the function and then use in the, um, in the body. We need to call. Uh, we need to allocate a VK application info. But in order to do this, we need the first to, um, for our application engine name, create, uh, um, allocate some native space, and then allocate this string on the native memory via stack UTF-8. Then we call VK application info. We set this type, all the string, happy version one. We go next. We retrieve the required extension. It's a pointer buffer. If it's null, then we get uh, we are um, we know uh, we are in uh, in a narrow state. Then we create a, a VK 
uh, instance create info also uh, with the coherence type, and then uh, we pass our application info we just created. Then if this required instance extension is not empty and we require, uh, we want, the user want to have validation, then we need to um, allocate, uh, we need to take the pointer buffer and then make space for another slot and then copy back all the stuff and finally allocate uh, the, the new extension. Like we are doing here, so uh, we copy all the extension for the, from the required extension, extension to the instance extension variable. We uh, allocate the VK, uh, the bug utils, then uh, we um, actually put it, and then we set the variable. Otherwise, we set uh, immediately the, the variable of before because we didn't have to add a new extension. Then again, if we need validation, then we need uh, the VK Lite kernels validation, which has all the um, current validation functionality. We want to check if this is available. So basically, we uh, retrieve uh, all the instance layer properties in this way. You create a um, pointer to Nanita to retrieve all the layer properties uh, um, count, and then with this, you can actually allocate all the buffer for the layer properties, and then retrieve finally all the layer properties. Then we check if this layer is present. If this is present, then we simply um, allocate a pointer buffer. We give uh, the, this validation layer name in this pointer buffer, and then we assign to the corresponding variable. If not, we fire an error. At the end, we create a pointer buffer where will be saved the um, instance pointer. So we call vcreate create instance, and we pass at the end our pointer buffer. We will return, we will get an int at the end. Then we will create our VK instance. We pop the stack and we return the result. Create instance. So with VK2, we can just do this. Uh, create instance. Uh, we return directly an inline classes. It's everything on Java. We don't want to deal, uh, we already take the hit uh, of the performance since we are in JVM. I don't want also to take the hit uh, about writing, let's say, I will not say hardly, but Pass me that, bear with me on this. So I don't want to write all the boiler page code. So application info, hello triangle, my engine once. No need to deal with pre string and so on. I don't have to type also the, the I don't have to specify the type. So then I, I get the required inside extension. It's one unique array list of string. I want to avoid the nullability. So just if it's empty, I'm in the failure state. Then I create the instance create info. If it's not empty, if I want validation, I just add the, the string into the array list, and then I simply pass the array list to the corresponding variable. If it's validation, VK layer kernel validation, with just one line, we retrieve all our layer properties. All the boilerplate code is again hidden by the, by the library. We check if it's present the layer. If it's present, we simply add them. Otherwise, we find the error. And then we create the instance. Again, no pointers, so we don't have to create a pointer buffer and then retrieve from the pointer buffer after calling the function. It's a direct instance session, and there is no allocation function, because I never saw um, anything about uh, um, passing something for the allocation, so this is all, always null. What is the expecting VK result? Well, since everything is in line, we can just call a uh, function that it's a dummy constructor and then uh, uh, also accept a lambda at the end, it's in line, so we can write a return, and in the lambda we'll be given the result. At the first one, we return the instance. What happened to the stack? Well, you remember we had to create the stack once and then use inside the code. Here, what we do, basically, we use the stack just in two places, where we retrieve the layer properties, and when we get the instance. This will be all automatically done. I mean, if you don't pass the, in this way, the stack will be um, retrieved. You, you will get the hit of the stack get twice. If you don't want to get this hit, then what you do, you basically call create instance using the memory stack as a receiver. So everything nice, very few modification, and it's really um, efficient because um, in the hot loop, you don't want to pay 
uh, an additional hit, so you, can, you should pass uh, um, the stack that you get uh, all through down the, um, the, the stack function where it's needed. All the libraries are available at github.com under Kotic Graphics um, Organization. Sorry, uh, I don't have time for a, a question and answer, and uh, I hope you will find some interesting stuff over there. <laughs>